falling. You are not able to fall if you are in Him. He keeps you on firm ground. We sing a hymn, don't we? On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And if you're in Christ, if you're born again through faith in Him, He keeps you from falling. But you, you don't do the keeping. Who does the keeping? He does. He is able to keep you from falling. And then it says He's able to present you faultless before the presence of His glory. And Jesus in the future, when human history is over, He will present every one of His own, all those who have trusted in Him, He will present them faultless before the Father. And won't that be a wonderful moment? I don't think we talk about it enough. We don't celebrate and look forward to that moment when you and I will be presented faultless before the Savior. I believe the hymn writer John Newton tried to express this when he said in the song Amazing Grace, I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. And in that lyric, he calls himself a wretch. You and I are wretched. And I think one of the things we've lost in our modern church and in Christianity today, we don't see ourselves in the real way that God sees us. And John Newton saw himself for what he really was. He, he was an alcoholic. He was involved in the slave trade. He was uh, a vile man. His own crew despised him and wanted him to... Uh, they literally threw him overboard one time to, to uh, remove him from their presence, and then they pulled him back upon the deck of the ship. Uh, he was not a good man. And John Newton never lost that understanding that he was vile, wretched, and blind. But then Christ saved him, and he could now see, and that he would one day be presented faultless before the throne. That is an amazing work, and only Jesus Christ can do that. He's the only one that can keep you from falling, and He's the only one that can pre present you faultless before the throne. Now, the word faultless is a word which was used for the animals that were brought for sacrifice. And if you are familiar with the Old Testament, the animals that were brought to be sacrificed had to be without spot or without blemish. In fact, in Exodus, when the first Passover was kept, Moses and the children of Israel were instructed to get a male of the first year, and that, again, had to be without blemish or spotless. Now, why was that? Why was the condition put on the animal to be sacrificed? Why did it have to be spotless or without blemish? I believe there's two clear reasons. One, the sacrifice was a picture of the Lord Jesus that he would come to this earth and live his entire life and not be guilty of sin. The book of Hebrews tells us that he was tempted at all points like as we are, but yet without sin. So that was one picture of the sacrifice. But the other picture was, God said, I want your lambs to be your very best. Because human nature, if you had some lambs, and you had one that had a kind of a gross tumor on the side of its head, and that happens to livestock. Or if you had one that had a bad leg and was limping around or was real scrawny, I mean, just bones. You know, you tried to feed it and it just never put on any weight. Guess which animal people would bring to the Lord? Those ones that were tumored or limping or scrawny and had a bad back or something. Because guess which ones you would get to keep and have for yourself? You'd get the better ones. So God says, I demand the best. I can only accept excellence. Well, you and I, if you understand that you're like John Newton, if you're a wretch and blind, then how are you and I ever going to stand faultless before God, our Creator? will do so because Jesus is the one that presents us. He's the one who brings us to God. And when He does this, God the Father sees you and I, full, you and I who are sinners and transgressors, He sees us through the filter of His Son's work. And what Jesus did on the cross was a perfect and complete work. It doesn't need any help. The church can't help what Jesus did on the cross, neither can a preacher, a cult group, or any type of 
of so-called Christian ministry. You cannot add to what Christ did perfectly. It was a perfect work. And so He's able to keep us from falling. He's able to prevent us faultless before the presence of His glory. And then it says how He's going to do it. Let's look at verse 24 the, at the very end. He's going to do it with exceeding joy. We will not be able to know the joy that will accompany the presentation of all the saved of all time before the Father in glory. It will be shouting ground. Even some of us reserved Baptists will be able to shout, say hallelujah, praise the Lord, and there will be rejoicing like never has been known. How do we know this? The Bible tells us that when a person is converted, Jesus said the angels in heaven rejoice over one sinner that repents. So while here on earth we know that the angels, whatever day you were saved on, you may not know the exact date. Uh, myself, I, I believe that on July 6th, 1980, I was saved in my bedroom. It was a Saturday night. I was saved in my bedroom at age 19. I believe that was the day. I trusted in Christ for the first time, and the Bible declares that when a sinner repents, when we turn from our being the boss, when we look to Christ and make Him Lord of our life and look to Him for salvation, that is that moment of salvation, and the angels rejoiced. But there is a greater rejoicing here in Jude 24 when we will be presented to the Father faultless pure and clean. In fact, Revelation says we'll be clothed in robes of white. There'll just be a, a faultless, beautiful presentation there, and it will be a sight. Hopefully, billions of people through human history will be there. We hope that it's billions, and it's our job, it's our duty to share Christ with people so that they can be part of that beautiful picture. The Bible uses the imagery of a bride adorned for a wedding. And guess who the bride is? You and I. Believers. Every person who has been born again through faith in Christ is a part of the bride of Christ, and we're presented to the groom. Jesus called himself the groom, and he said, I will have that time, and there will be a marriage supper, and it will be a glorious celebration. Think back at your wedding or maybe a wedding you've attended. It was a time of joy and expectation and you wanted everything just right. And that's how the father's wedding will be for his son. It'll be a wonderful time. When Jesus told us in John 14 that I go to my father's house and prepare a place for you, and if I go, I will come again so that I can receive you unto myself, he was using the Hebrew wedding tradition of the son going to build the new home for himself and his bride, and the father of the, of the son was the building inspector. Now you know why, don't you? Any Hebrew boy that was wanting to get married to a girl and the only thing standing between him and getting married was building something, what would he build? Something fast, something quick. I want to go get my bride. But in the Hebrew tradition was you built on to your father's existing home. And that's why John 14 says there are many mansions. And I know some of you like to be left alone. Some of you like a quiet place. But mansions are not isolated hilltop places in heaven. You're not having a four-column white house on the back 40 in heaven. The picture is more of an apartment building, more of a communal setting where your father's house, your, Jesus is going there and he has built a place for you. And that's where I want to be. I want to be with Jesus. I don't want to be anywhere else but where Jesus is. And I hope that's your desire today. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. And with this, I want to examine how are false teachers um, corrupting this? How can you distort what is here? Well, one of the ways they do that is through the teaching of false doctrines. 
And uh, Billy, if you'll pull up that next screen, 